meeting today goes from two to four and uh, it looks like we've got a full house from everybody that's here. Oh, got that, Lauren, you'll be here by phone. Okay. Thanks for letting us know, Lauren. Um, so yes, uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Couple next couple slides are reminders for everyone about our, uh, oh, here's Stan, great. Just reminders about Zoom meeting tips in case the break for that many of us took over the last week or two. Uh, remind us where our controls are and, uh, and how we are, we are participating in the meeting today. Um, it's great if we can be on video as much as possible. So appreciate that. Hi, Stan. We're just getting Hi. under, we're, we're just getting started. You haven't missed anything. Thank you. I like the beard. Well, winter time. Yeah, I was gonna say, got that fur on the face there. Okay, so uh, everybody's named. Yep, so we don't have to worry about that. Folks know how to chime in. And just a reminder about the chat. It, just remember everybody doesn't have equal access to the chat. Um, we've got a couple of folks who are calling in on the phone so they can't see the chat. Our viewers can't see the chat. It doesn't get picked up in the, um, in the stream. So, you know, as much as possible, we're a smallish group. So let's, let's not use the chat unless it's something that you need to let Sam and I know, um, you know, a technical difficulty, that kind of a thing. That would be, that'd be great if you could minimize the use of the chat. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. And we already know all about these. Uh, you know about the speaker view. Let's go to the next slide. All right, our agenda today. So um, the focus of the agenda today is really on uh, any options that folks have been able to talk with their affinity groups about or that are emerging for themselves that you want to share with the rest of the group. The last couple, the last two meetings, really, we've got we've spent a lot of time focused on trying to see where there might be some options that the group. Um, could support and uh, and that the last meeting in particular, we spent the whole meeting really focused on if there was uh, anything different that could be done around the 30 day, um, the 30 day interval. And, uh, you know, I did hear from some folks that people felt like I was hitting pretty hard on that. And I just want to remind everybody that, you know, for Sam and I, as the process folks, we don't have a particular you know, we, we don't have a particular outcome that we're looking for. And that, you know, we were really trying to understand the um, the nuances around the 30 day and, and why it's in place and where it came from and what the, um, um, you know, what the, what the opportunities might be or the options might be uh, to explore, you know, something different. Um, so, you know, just wanted to let you know that if you, that, that, that was our intent. So I just wanted to share that because um, I know that uh, we talked with a couple of folks who, um, you just had some questions about that. So I'm, I'm hoping that today we get some uh, good dialogue going about some options and uh, to see you know, if there's some movement um, among the group. And I've got a couple slides, if you can just bear with me, just to, to give us a couple reminders and to give everybody a little bit of space to think before we jump into the conversation. So Sam, you wanna go to the next slide? So again, meeting guidelines. Um, folks have been really good about uh, adhering to the meeting guidelines. You know, just I mean, you're a part of this work group because of your expertise and and um, the inform you know the the community that you represent. And so it's really important that you participate. So we really hope to hear your voice today. Um, we know that folks are prepared. Um, and uh, if we could balance speaking time, that would be great to make sure. And I'll do my best um, to make sure that we're pulling voices out. I think we spent a lot of time on one side at the last meeting, and so we'll do a better job of being more balanced around that. And uh, serving as liaison to your larger community of interest. I know that folks are talking to people in their larger circle about um, ideas and options and concerns and issues, and so I know you're bringing those forward. Um, we ask that folks participate in open and mutually respectful way, that we're, we, we know that there's a wide range of opinions around this table. Um, it's not easy to reach agreement with folks that, you philosophically or principally, um, you know, have some different have differences with, and uh, we'll just do the best we can. And then act in good faith. All we can ask is that everybody bring their whole self here and that we're, you know, acting in good faith as we move forward. Um, so just a good reminder about the meeting guidelines. Uh, next slide, Sam. Mission scope of authority, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here. We've spent a lot of time here. Um, 
you know, we know what the, the charge of the group is and the, the sideboards around that. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Just a quick reminder, especially for our viewing audience about where we've been. We've been meeting since June. You can see all the topics that we've addressed. Um, we're hoping to wrap this all up here in February or March and get um, a report to the uh, ODFW commission in that time frame. Let's go, go ahead and go to the next slide. So this is a new slide um, that Sam and I thought would be helpful to put out here. And, and just it's really kind of reminding us all where we are in this process. And you know, this is a, it's a work group process, it's a collaborative process. In a lot of ways, it's a negotiation process. And we've started to you know, use that word a little bit more as we're trying to figure out, you know, is there, is there something that this group can create that's different than what exists now around the, the uh, trap check time intervals? And you know, if you look at this little cycle, this is a pretty, people have probably seen something like this before. You know, we started, we, we've done a lot of work in, in trying to understand and from each other's perspective about what the issues are that we're trying to address. We've spent a lot of time um, gathering and sharing information um, about some of the, you know, some of the areas that people wanted to get smarter around and learn more about or be able to share information with each other around. And, you know, we've had good dialogue around those things. Um, you know, we've done a, lot, a fair amount of sharing concerns around different ideas and why things are the way they are and why people would like things to be different. Um, the brainstorm options and identify evaluate alternatives, you know, we haven't really we haven't really done a true brainstorm of options. I've tried to get everybody to look at the Jamboard and have us do that. And it seems like we've gotten stuck the last two times on, on a particular potential alternative and evaluating that. And so, you know, so today, what I'm hoping that we can do is people can put out, you know, any, any options that um, they've been noodling around and make sure we've got a, a good complete set. And then, you know, let's pick one and, and work it and see, you know, if there's um, some middle ground that we can come up with around that. And so, you know, it's just a helpful reminder that this is a cycle. And as, you know, as new information comes out, as, a, you know, an alternative that people haven't considered before comes out, um, you know, then we, we might need to share information or there's concerns about that. I mean, it's a whole, it's a cycle, it's a dialogue cycle. So I just wanted to acknowledge and remind everybody about where we are in our conversation and our discussion. And um, hopefully, you know, what we're trying to get to is deciding on an alternative or a set of recommendations, whatever language you want to put there, that we can, um, you know, put forward to the commission. But we're really, you know, you can't see where I'm pointing. Um, but if, Sam, if you could move your cursor, I mean, we're really in this brainstorm options and identify evaluate alternatives area. And, you know, at the last meeting, we spent a lot of time exploring the idea of something different around the 30 day. Um, interval for kill traps, and 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 so you know we're we're kind of in that space right now. So just it's just a good reminder of where we are, and where we've been. Go ahead and go to the next slide. So for the group discussion, um, this is pretty much the same slide we've had the last two meetings, where we're asking folks to put you know ideas out there and 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 ask questions of each other about those ideas. Um, and then you know we will take those, and when we get to a place where we actually have some things that start, are starting to form a basis of recommendations, we'll take those and um, help to develop a report, and then we'll be continuing to work on that. Um, but go ahead and go to the next slide, Sam. So these are the these are some of the options that are on the tables to date that that you all have put forward, um, that and that we've kind of that we've discussed. And so you know the options range from, I mean. You know, just keeping the current program as it is to refinements to the current program. And we've talked about, you know, less than 30 days for kill traps. Um, and uh, Jill at the last meeting brought out, you know, just put on the table just some other time frames, but we really didn't talk about any other time frames. Um, Bob and um, folks from the uh, environmental community put out an idea of 24 hours across all categories. And it certainly is an option, um, although not preferable from Jill's perspective. Um, that they're, you know, that we just can't get to a recommendation from this group. Um, and, but that is something that it, it's something to be evaluated and discussed, you know, kind of what does that mean if this group can't come up with something um, that's a recommendation that people can support. So these are, this is kind of what's on the table 
right now. And Sam, what is the, is the next slide one we were gonna share right now? Yeah, it's just a non-interval related recommendation. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, because there are some other things that have come up around potential recommendations that are non-time interval related, um, but are um, complementary to a set of recommendations that this group might put forward. And so we've, we've spent a lot of time talking about best management practices and BMP compliant traps and BMP compliant or, um, practices and, you know, and how to heighten everybody's um, um, confidence, I guess, in that trapping is being done in as uh, high of adherence to best management practices as possible. Uh, we also talked about education information for the public about the role of trapping um, you know, in, in predation and damage. Um, you know, the whole range of uh, what trapping, how trapping serves communities and landowners um, and how it can be done in a humanely way, in a, in a humane way. Um, we've talked about research and data gathering on time intervals uh, and, you know, how to, how to get that information. You know, um, this is something that Tyler talked a lot about at the last, didn't talk a lot about it, but Tyler was really pushing for, you know, is there a, you know, do we need some more data around what it means to move from one interval to another? Um, is there something, you know, is, is there some information that we should study, some research, some information that we should uh, be gathering to help us better make an informed choice about if we were to change the intervals? Um, and hopefully I captured that accurately. And then exploration of uh, classification of animals, you know, how that helps or hinders um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the trap check interval um, discussion. So th that's, these are, this is a roll up of kind of all the sort of the potential uh, recommendations and options on the table that we've heard so far. And, uh, and so the, the, what's, what's, remind me of the next slide, Sam. Those were some other options that the group hasn't talked about yet. Yeah, so let's not let's not show that one. So okay. Sam and I've done a little bit of noodling just trying to think about, you know, it's just like where are, you know, if we were to open the creative box, where are some other places we could go? Um, but we'd rather have you all do that because that's really what you <laughs> you're here to do. And so um so I'm going to pause just for a minute and see if there are any questions about just kind of where we've been, what we're trying to do today. Um, what I've just shared, any clarifications of how I've characterized where, where I think we are. If anybody wants to do any of that, I welcome it so that we can make sure that uh, we've got an accurate platform that we're launching our conversation from today. I'm not seeing any, any clarifications or questions so far. All right, well, so how about we just launch into, um, you know, so let's go, Sam, can you go back to that slide that has the guidelines on it for the, um, the, the three points for the question, for the discussion? Yeah, there we are. So um, at the last meeting, we ended it with, it looked like we had a bit of a stalemate. We asked people to go off and meet with their affinity groups and do some deeper thinking about some ideas to bring forward. Um, and we hope that you had a chance to do that. And so now is the time to bring those forward. Um, and so, you know, I'd like to open the floor up um, for folks to step in and, and offer what they've been thinking about. And I'll, and I'll call on you if I, nobody steps forward, but I'll just give you a chance to do that on your own. Okay, <laughs> nobody wants to come forward yet. All right, well, I know that some folks have been and Sam's got her jam board up so we can put some things down. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead. So Tyler, is it okay if I start with you? I know that yeah, we've no, had some conversations. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, some ideas that we've been pondering, um, just speaking for OHA here, but you know, I'd, I'd like to discuss a little more the the give and take aspect of a work group or otherwise uh, compromise. I don't feel though that we've been talking much about a compromise. I feel we've just been talking about further 
restrictions on trap check intervals. But so hear me out here. Um, generally speaking, OHA is willing to support a 14 day trap check interval for lethal traps. If the work group will support a budget increase for wildlife services to ensure that wildlife services is still capable of providing the same level of services to those in need that they currently do. Um, I think this is going to take some fleshing out amongst the group, but it's an idea. So um, the second idea you already touched on there in one of your slides, um, OHA definitely supports best management practices, and it's really the only science that we've been able to discuss so far in this work group. Um, so therefore, we propose that the, the work group would support a couple of those things that you mentioned, um, increased trapper education programs um, and BMP compliance. Those are really my ideas. All right. So and so rather than us talk about them, let's make sure we get a full slate of ideas out before and then we'll we'll pick some and just have and have dialogue around it. Does that sound good? We'll see what other ideas there are. OK. So who else has been doing some deeper thinking about this over the last couple of weeks and has some things to put forward? Thanks, Tyler, for going first. Kelly or Quinn? Yeah, Jamie, I can I can present some of the things that we've been thinking about. Um, I did have a, a quick question about uh, Tyler's recommendations. Do those just reflect um, OHA's recommendations or is that more broadly that affinity group? I can only speak for OHA, so okay. Okay. keep it to that. Okay, thanks Tyler. Um, and please do let me know. I keep getting this notice that my um, internet connection is unstable. So if for some reason I tank out, if someone could alert me, that would be great. Okay. You sound good so far, Quinn. All right. All right. Um, so we had the chance to meet, um, you know, myself with the Center for Biological Diversity, um, Kelly and Susan are alternate with the Humane Society of the U.S. and, and Bob with Portland Audubon. So um, I'm going to be presenting some ideas on behalf of, you know, those three organizations. But of course, you know, I would invite, um, you know, Bob and Kelly to, to weigh in with additional context or background as appropriate. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the first thing we wanted to do was stipulate up front um, that an animal left unattended for a long period of time in a trap just doesn't meet basic standards of care. Um, you know, that includes, um, but is not limited to, access to food and water, uh, protection from and exposure to the elements, um, and protection from predation. You know, the longer it goes on, the greater these problems become. So I think that stipulation um, is important to our group. Um, I do want to emphasize that our three organizations continue to believe that a 24 hour trap check requirement is the minimum standard for any animal in a trap. Um, and frankly, even that is too long. Um, all that does is make the practice less inhumane. Um, that being said, you know, we participated in this work group in the spirit of finding a compromise uh, that improves conditions for Oregon's wildlife. So to that end, we recommend that ODFW adopt a consistent trap check time, uh, you know, for all wildlife, all traps on both public and private land. Um, and for the purposes of this work group, we recommend that at a minimum, we should bring all trap check times in line with the current standard for fur bearers. Um, and that would require that trap checks be checked at least every 48 hours. Um, and now just quickly speaking for myself to consistency, We've been really deep in this issue for months now, and I keep having to go back to those <laughs> matrix, to the matrix that Derek sent out to remind myself, okay, what, how does it work for this? I mean, it just seems to that consistency would make things so much easier. So that's been something that's come up repeatedly for our groups. Um, and I, I think this responds, you know, to what Tyler was saying. We are interested in working with other stakeholders uh, to increase funding for research and implementation of non-lethal strategies for conflict resolution. So 
you know, if we move toward, um, you know, this standard that's already in place for fur bearers, um, that would move the most egregious trap check times in Oregon, you know, not 76 hours to 30 days to no trap check times at all for black bears to 48 hours for all wildlife and all traps. Um, you know, Oregon fur takers have been able to adhere to this standard. Uh, and we've heard from this work group that, that many aim to check their traps in less than 48 hours, which is fantastic. Uh, it just seems only reasonable that trappers of other wildlife and wildlife services in particular should be held to the same standard. And you know, we think our recommendation reflects um, public opinion um, and would establish a more consistent and enforceable trap check interval for trappers. And we think it's an important step toward modernizing Oregon's trapping regulations. I, you know, Jamie, I have some sort of more um, background for how we, we came to those numbers, but I wanted to pause there if you're kind of just collecting the, the basic recommendations at this point. Yeah, what I'm trying to do, okay. that. thank you for that, Quinn. I'm, yeah. I'm, we're trying to just populate the basic recommendations, Great. have us take a step back, and then have it, open it up to questions of each other Great. about, you know, what does this mean and how could this work, you know, just that, that move into that dialogue. So let's make Sounds sure good. we've got a full suite of um, ideas on the table at this point. So thanks, Quinn. Yeah. And one thing for um, Samantha, I might just mention is consistent 48 hours, you know, in line with the current standard for fur bearers. And, Qu and Quinn, just to clarify, I know, Bob, you've been, yes. um, you're distracted, you're in and out, but this, what you've put out there does represent conversation that you've had with Audubon, with uh, Bob and with Kelly. Correct, yes. Okay. And for everyone, please do feel free to correct me if I'm missing something or don't capture all the thoughts quite yeah. right. And I apologize for running in and out, but yes, we, we, we talked about it, so we're all, we're all on the same page. Thanks, Thanks for Ben. That. Um, and uh, there was a question about the um, ideas that came forward from OHA about whether or not they were reflective of the trappers' um, concerns. And so, Jim, can I put you on the spot for just a minute and see um, if you have any additional ideas to put forward or um, any like refinements or to anything that's up here? Have you given much thought to this over the last couple months, couple weeks? We're interested in the our, our trappers' perspective. Well, um, we can't trap efficiently on a twenty-four hour trap check. Um, now, you know, there might be an unattended consequence here uh, with a twenty-four hour trap check that some people haven't thought of. Trappers. Uh, want to get as far away as they can from populated areas in order to do their trapping. The last thing that we want to do is catch any dogs, cats, or anybody's pets in, in traps. Uh, if, um, if we were forced into a 24-hour trap check, um, my biggest fear is that a lot of people would set a lot more traps closer to populated areas where they would have to check them, you know, on a 24 hour trap. And I, my fear is that as a result of that, uh, there would be more dogs and cats caught in traps. Uh, so, you know, Think a little bit about it, what you're asking for on that 24 hour trap check. It, it just simply doesn't work. Uh, so that's my thought. Thanks for that, Jim. Any other new ideas that you have? Uh, no, um, we think we're fine with the trap check intervals that we have. You know, wildlife services is with USDA and there's some question as to what jurisdiction this group would have over USDA. Um, you know, that's, that's set by, <clears throat> by statute. And uh, 
I don't think that uh, this this group uh, really um, has any jurisdiction over that. You know, or the commission, to be honest with you. Okay, thanks for that, Jim. Um, now I'm going to turn to, we've got Lauren on the phone, and I know, Lauren, you're distracted. Um, but you're the primary and Kyle is your alternate. So, um, Lauren, I want to, I want to, oh, <laughs> she was, she was out and now she's back. Hey, Lauren, I know that you're distracted. You've got you're managing a bunch of things too. Um, we've got Kyle here as the alternate and I just wanted to get from your, um, you know, your perspective uh, and then Drenda, I'll ask you the same question, you know, from a land manager perspective. Are, have you folks had a chance to get together? Do you have some ideas to put on the table? Um, I would start at higher than 14. Um, I, but I'm speaking for a broad swath of farmers and ranchers across the state. I think, um, and I mentioned this in the land management group, I think one of the issues I'm, I'm really struggling with is that there are some of my uh, farmers that may be able to do, to work with the lower time interval, depending on where in the state and what, what, what animal they're managing. Um, I think we're really missing the cattlemen because um, I think that um, it's our large ranchers uh, that would really, really struggle uh, with these with uh, a significantly shorter um, trap uh, check interval for those those lethal traps. So um, I, I, I'm kind of my hands are tied in that. Um, I agree with this comment on coupled with increased support from APHIS. Um, we uh, we've experienced this. Um, before where um, we've had a lot of pushback um, in our support um, in the legislature for increased funding for APHIS and also um, in um, even in last session, our attempts to uh, uh, extend the sunset on uh, predator damage control districts that um, allow landowners to fund um, their own uh, districts to to fund APHIS to pay for that um, and that was fought really hard by um, groups and so it's difficult uh, for us um, when we hear oh APHIS can handle it they've absorbed it in other states but specifically in our state we've had experienced a lot of pushback from groups on the funding of APHIS and so how can they absorb that if they can't get the funding they would need to do that. Okay, thanks for that, Lauren. And I know you were speaking from the uh, Farm Bureau and you know a little bit channeling the cattleman's perspective. And um, and Kyle, I understand you know you're the you're the alternate for Lauren. Um, but if the group is fine with this, I mean Kyle does represent a very different set of people. Um, and so I don't know, Kyle, if there's a different perspective from Lauren or if you guys have had anything to put forward from the forestry side. Sure, I. Not entirely different, I would say. I, you know, in terms of like Tyler had mentioned, the fourteen days. Um, you know, like Warren said, something north of that would be preferable. Um, but I think willing to have a conversation about something less than thirty, uh, as long as it's still workable, and and then paired with and and I was thinking, and I appreciate Tyler's ideas. I, you know, we talked. Um, a fair bit, and and Quinn just mentioned it as well about trying to limit uh, the time that an animal would be suffering in these traps. And and given we're talking primarily about lethal traps and the thirty day check, it makes sense to me. Um, and and our membership was supportive to to prescribe you know those BMPs to ensure that we are using efficient and effective equipment and techniques. Uh, and so. Um, that was an idea I had as well. And then really liked the idea of pairing that with, um, you know, realizing we are increasing costs, potentially reducing effectiveness, pair that with uh, support for landowners, either through wildlife services or uh, the ability to form their own districts and be able to pay for WCOs. Um, so I, I guess without having 
coordinated it, we are fairly well on the same page from a land manager's perspective. Great, thanks for that. And thanks group for allowing me to pick on Kyle a little bit. Um, so Drenda. Thank you. Uh, Kyle and Tyler and Lauren really summed up most of what I would have to say. It's a fiscal issue for the counties, any reduction in the trap check time. Um, I am late to this game, but I haven't seen the data of, of the, what the problem is we're trying to solve, how many uh, issues have there been where, where we have documented um, lethal traps not being lethal. Uh, so that's a, that's a question for me personally as I present this to the counties. But, but fiscally, uh, it's the issue. I think north of the 14 days, I could get the, the membership there. Um, but I agree with the increased um, research and uh, prescribing of the, what the traps are and kind of the enforcement on that end rather than the trap check. Thanks for that, Drenda. Oh, let's see. Who am I forgetting? I think that's everybody in terms of the stakeholder perspectives, in terms of ideas. Does anybody else, I mean, did I forget anybody in terms of ideas on the table for the group to consider? And then we'll just start going through these and talking about them and seeing what questions you have for each other. and. Um, you know, so we can understand them better. Quinn, go ahead. Um, oh no, never mind. Sorry, I see it. I just wanted to make sure we'd captured the, the support for increased research and implementation of non-lethal conflict management. So maybe we can say increased uh, funding for, just so we know what we're talking about. Yeah, you got that, Sam? Okay, Bob, I see your hand. Oh. Your hand was up. It was up. I was going to say what Quinn said. Uh, we can support um, increased funding for non-lethal and wildlife conflict resolution strategies. Uh, we're not. We're not in favor of uh, funding for wildlife services to uh, for more lethal control. So let's just make sure we have both of those up there, and then we can talk through each of these different ideas. Increased funding for non-lethal, and then you have increase, is there one that says increase funding for APHIS? That's, I had that coupled with the 14 day interval because I heard that was important. Um, oh, I see, there it is. Hand in hand, but I can pull out the, the support as another one. Yeah, well, let's leave it there because that's how, that's how Tyler uh, presented it. So, um, so other, any other ideas that we want to put out there before we start asking questions of each other about them to see how they how they could work or to understand them better? I think maybe Tyler could speak to this, but on his, the uh, coupled with the increased support is specifically mentioned budget. So funding, I think would be an important part of that. Mm. And I think that's also, and Tyler can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's for all services that APHIS supports, not picking and sort of choosing what APHIS does. I think what they're allowed to do under law is what we would want to fund. <laughs> Any other clarifications or additional ideas to put out? All right, so um, so now let's move into questions to understand what's up here. And, and I'm purposely slowing down the conversation a little bit, you know, and it's natural for us to kind of start jumping in there and saying, I like this one, I hate this one, uh, but let's make sure we understand what we have on the board first. And so what questions do you have for each other about what you've just heard about these ideas? So I have a question um, and I just take it as my naivete. Um, when we're talking traps and we're talking rodents. Um, and so for example, if we're looking at consistent 
across and with standard for all, all categories. Does that include pest rodents like rats? Anybody want to speak to that? What's it? How does that currently? I'll look at Shannon. Um, Shannon, what? How does that currently work now? Currently work now with pest rodents, yeah, with pest rodents. mice and rats. Yeah, I was um, <laughs> trying to rack my brain really quick about what that would be. Um, it definitely falls under the unclassified mammal, um, and so I don't think there's any trap check times, regardless of. The nature of the traps or the location but i think we said we had brian wolfer on here so he can fact check me on this yeah you're you're correct there shannon um unprotected mammals um and you know on, on private property then those uh predatory animals includes rodents um unprotected mammals is not all rodents but it's um a group of rodents including gophers moles um even some of the, the non-native like nutria as, as a rodent. And so um, th there's still that trap check requirement uh, for rodents. Jill, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just want to clarify. So they are rats, non-native rats and non-native mice are considered, uh, I, I would think that nothing would apply to them. They could be trapped anytime. Uh, that's probably a question that I might check a book here real quick before I give a final answer on. Um, but, but typically, uh, I think those would fall under unprotected, but let me dig into something real quick and get you a final answer. And yeah, just to be clear, I didn't catch the non-native part in Lauren's question. So does it matter if they're native or non-native or just that they're in the rodentia family and they're really rats and mice? I, I was just asking about rats and mites across the board, whether they're on my farms or they're in a Portland apartment complex. I mean, I'm just the rats, generally speaking, the mice, generally speaking. Yeah, that's how I took it. Yeah, I do think that Jill raises an interesting caveat you know, in the sort of native, non-native, in, in terms of invasive species, that kind of a thing, if there's anything different there. I don't know if Jill, if that's where you were headed. Uh, yeah, typically, uh, you know, non-native species, there's, there's no uh, protection of them um, unless they were considered a game animal like turkeys or something like that. But for uh, a black rat or a, a roof rat, or a um, house mouse, those are all non-native. And um, those are the ones you find in cities, although we actually had rats up here one time and we didn't have animals even around, but I, what happened was a house got burned down that did have rats and they came up here. I got rid of them, of course, but uh, you know, uh, native rats tend to be on the, well, there's, there's some that are called rats, on this side, on the west side, but um, there's others that are on the east side. There are native rats, but they're not they're not at all related to the the black rat or the roof rat or the house mouse. Yeah, and this is a good distinction for the question, which Brian will get us an answer here. I know he's looking it up as we speak, but um, it really does make a difference because some of our native ones are sensitive or specially class. So it would be a little bit different for them on, on whether you have to factor into your trapping exercise, the risk of catching one of them. So anyway, Brian, I'll give us an answer here in a minute. Yeah, and, and uh, Sam um, shared, just shared with me some information from ODFW and Sam, is, where did that, where is that from? About yeah, whether or so not we wanna. ODFW uh, circulated around that, lit, that um, matrix with the different trap check intervals and also those definitions for the different animals, the predatory animals for various unprotected mammals. 
And so I, I don't know if it catches the nuance that Shannon, you were just alluding to, but I, I can drop in the definition for predatory animals in the chat, if that's helpful. Yeah, if you can put that in there, if that's what Kevin Blakely sent around to everybody, and then I'll read it out when it's in the chat while Brian is, is, is off. Uh, so this is from the table that Kevin Blakely sent out. I'm reading it now. It says predatory animals include feral swine as defined in ODA rule, comma, coyotes, comma, rabbits, comma, rodents and birds that are or may be destructive to agricultural crops, products and activities, but excluding game birds and other birds determined by the State Fish and Wildlife Commission to be in need of protection. Rodents, order Rodentia, Rodentia? Um, includes beaver, mountain beaver, muskrat, porcupine, nutria, yellow-bellied marmot, squirrels, gophers, mice, and voles. So that is in the information uh, that Kevin sent around. So what are the questions? Oh, Jill, did you have something else? Uh, yeah, I didn't hear you say rat when you were reading that. Let's see. Yeah, actually, rat isn't in there. But they're part of the rodentia family. And so the question is, is whether the commensal rodents, what we would typically refer to as the pest rodents, mm -hmm. like Jill was saying, a roof rat and so forth, black rat. Um, and in some cases and in some scenarios, commensal rodents are given exemptions. So the question really is down to ODF and W in the rules where they articulate and describe the trap check intervals. Is there a carve out or an exemption for commensal rodents? But as it stands under Oregon statute 610s, it just classifies them, you know, any rodentia. Um, and, and then the ones that were defined as were just read. So uh, we need to kind of wait to see what Brian finds, whether there is any distinction given um, in, in the rules that they've outlined. Yeah, so we'll wait to hear back from Brian on that. Um, thanks, Kevin. Bob, I saw your hand go up and then come down. Yeah, I mean, I think, um... Certainly with, with most of those species, um, regardless of whether they're native or non-native, I think it's still important to treat them humanely. And so I would just throw that in the hopper. Um, I think regardless of whether we're uh, dealing with, you know, they're, they're living beings and uh, it's important to make sure that whatever we do is uh, uh, minimize the suffering, even if we're attempting to remove them from the environment. Okay, thanks, Bob. Other questions about what's on the board from, of each other? What's the, um, so there are two up there. One's consistent 48 hours and in line with standard for fur bearer, bearers and then the 24 hours across categories. What's, what's the 24 hour? referring to. Uh, Bob, you want to speak to that? You, Bob brought it up at the last meeting, kind of right out, kind of right out of the chute. You know, I think what we said uh, in, in jumping Kelly uh, and Quinn uh, is that, you know, uh, we think 24 hours is, is the right number if you're going to trap it all, uh, but we're willing uh, to go to 48 uh, if, um, uh, you know, if that moves the needle significantly. So, um, I, I don't think any of us have been, again, to speak for yourselves if you like to, but I don't think any of us have moved off of the idea that, uh, that, uh, would, would lessen suffering. Uh, and I don't think also we feel that we've heard particularly good rationales for why it really needs to be longer. Uh, but at least 48 would move the needle substantially, would standardize things, and would uh, increase enforceability uh, and, and sort of take out some of the vagaries of the way uh, the current statutes play out. So, um, you know, that, that's where we stand at the moment. To capture that right, Kelly, Quinn? Right. Yeah. This is Kelly. And, um, Jenda, for your purposes, 
early on, we had done a comparison to other states and there are 36 other states that either have 24 daily trap check times. So it's been um, just a conversation that we've put forward. And so that's, and as Bob said, you know, when we're talking about when we moved to 48 hours, it was really just as an attempt to be like, can we have this conversation at a minimum to move the 76 hours to seven days to 30 days to no trap check times to at least be in line with the 48 hour trap check time that has been in place for years. And so, I'll let you know. Thank you. Um, so this is Lauren. So I'll also, I just wanted to comment sort of in response to the, the other states and Oregon. Um, Oregon's counties are set up differently than most other states. Um, and Drenda can speak to this probably a little bit more now that she's at AOC, but um, our counties in Oregon have a lot more services that they're responsible for providing um, as opposed to in other states. And so there is a, a lot more um, demands on their budget. So it is still a budget issue, I think, that, that Drenda validly raised as a concern um, just because there is a lot more demands on Oregon's counties than in other states um, across the board, just generally speaking, because of how our county's powers are given to them um, as, a, as opposed to Oregon's counties give power to the state as opposed to the other way around when they were originally set up. So it is different than in most states. Uh, you know, and can I respond to that? I and I appreciate that. And one of the other reasons that we looked to 24 hours is because not only is the AVMA recommendation, the American Veterinary Medical Association recommendation to check traps once every 24 hours, but also the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies, their trapping educational manual uh, encourages and recommends to check the traps daily and you know there are others so I appreciate that there are differences I bet of all the 35 states that have trap check times that are 24 hours and daily no state is the same I get that Oregon is not the same native Oregonian I get it but they've been able to make that work and they've and and there's guidance from you know the the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies um, there's guidance from the AVMA. We know it's common sense. The research has indicated that animals suffer in traps and this group is intending to minimize suffering. And, and that's why, you know, where we put forward the 24 hours, but, you know, recognizing that this group finding compromises is challenging. And so looking at the more egregious trap check times and moving them at a minimum to where the baseline is that 48 hours gets us closer to less suffering. Okay, other, other questions of each other about what you see up here? Tyler? Yeah, just kind of going back to what I said in my opening remarks, I, you know, I just don't see any give from the other side of the table here. I just see further restrictions. I mean, I, I'd appreciate some effort to try to compromise. I don't see this as a compromise. Further restrictions, if that's the only outcome of the work group, that's not a compromise. That's, that's a one-sided work group. Um, I've tried to come up with something that would allow wildlife services to continue to be productive as they are today um, while minimizing or, or reducing rather the, the trap check intervals for lethal traps, but I don't see anything on this, this sheet of paper that's that's giving from the other side of the table. So can you guys speak to that? Um, I can ahead, I can jump in here. Yeah. Um, so I guess there's a, a couple of things there. You know, it, our groups have been across the board. You know, from the get go. You know, we strongly believe that 24 hours should be the minimum standard. Our constituencies strongly believe that 24 hours should be the minimum standard. What we're saying today is that, you know, as part of this work group, you know, and for the purposes of compromise, we wanna talk about, let's go with what's already on the books for fur bearers and make it consistent across the board. And, and 
you know, and respectfully, Tyler, I would say too, that the only compromise that I saw from you was one change only for lethal traps and increased funding for wildlife services. So we changed our standard across the board and, and from you, I, I only, please, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I only see that uh, a proposal for a two week interval for lethal traps. So the, the frustration right. goes the, both ways. <laughs> right, I understand this is a frustrating work group, but from my, I mean, I've already heard several groups say they don't support increased support for wildlife services to continue what they're doing. Um, and to me, that's that's a no brainer, right? It seems like we are reducing the traffic interval due to animal welfare concerns um, and also maintaining productivity by throwing more money at it. I think that could be said um, for other intervals as well, but um, I will just come out and say point blank here that OHA will not support anything less than 48 hours for fur bears. Um, I think that this 24 hour uh, discussion is a non-starter for OHA. Um, and we'd like to, to continue the conversation about compromise. And I don't, again, you know, despite your, your explanation, I don't see a compromise. Quinn, is there anything more you wanted to say in your conversation with Tyler before we give the floor to Bob? No, I, I just want to clarify again, you know, and I, I heard this from, from Jim as well, you know, this, you know, we want to make sure that we're on the record as saying we believe that 24 hours is what we believe is the right standard, the most minimally acceptable standard. But we are compromising by saying, let's go to 48 hours in line with what's already on the books for fur bearers. So to be clear, there would be no change in the trap check time for the individual fur bearer trapper like Jim. So we're talking about moving the most egregious standards, the ones that are 76 hours, the, the seven days, 30 days to no trap check times to be in line with what's already on the book. So I, I, I don't understand how that's not uh, a compromise. And, and I get, I, I see the 24 hours there appears as a flashpoint, but we wanna make sure that we're looking at the full range, right? Because on one end of the spectrum, we have maintain the status quo, right? And on the other end, we have let's move down to 24 hours. So we've got this full range of things. I mean, we've got no changes to trap check intervals on the board as well. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the full spectrum and what we're talking about, I mean, a consistent 48 hour trap check time is moving from the edges of and the extremes of those, of that spectrum. So I just want to be clear that that's, that's why that's there. And that's why we, we have it there. Thanks Quinn. Um, and, and Bob, you're next and then Kyle and Bob, before you unmute, Sam, here, just a, a formatting thing that might be helpful. If you can move the no changes to trap check intervals and the little sticky that's there, just kind of move them down and move the 24 hours, keep them on the board, but just move them down so we can start to see where maybe there's things are being elevated that the group could support. And of course it's all malleable, but it's just, it starts to show maybe where there are some things um, that uh, the group, yeah, it's perfect, thank you. All right, Bob, go ahead. Yeah, as I said, same thing Quinn said, I think we said it several times now, we're willing to go to 48 hours across the board. Uh, I'm not even sure why we have the bottom row up there. I think, you know, we, we've narrowed the uh, range of uh, uh, possibility and um, you can keep the extremes up there uh, as, I, I guess, benchmarks, but I'm not sure what, the, what they're adding at this point. Uh, so we're, we're, at, we're at, for all practical purposes, we're at 48. Um, and I guess I would ask uh, the trapping side, where are you at for all practical purposes? And then we can erase the rest of it and, and negotiate from there. Yeah, I was just going to say that, Bob. I mean, if, if um, I, I was reticent to take the 24 hours off, but it sounds like the, we can go ahead and just take that off the board. And that does help us to have it not be a flashpoint. And then, Sam, if you want to make another jam board and move these stickies over you know, maybe just move them off to another one. There we go. Okay. Should I also uh, move the no changes to thinking about the extremes, the kind of the bookends of options? 
is that helpful as well? Are folks comfortable if we take the no changes to trap check intervals off the board? You can do a thumbs up. I was going to ask that, Mrs. Kelly. Are people not prepared to take that off the board yet? I'm not seeing thumbs up yet. So let's just, let's not press, let's just leave it there for just right now. We can make uh, move and it. And I'll the, be honest, uh, move it to the bottom. I am speaking on behalf of HSUS. I think, you know, we're in the spirit of compromise, we are talking about 48 hours moving, but it is a stretch. And so removing 24 hours is, I, I just want to document it, that that is the, the, the right place that we would like to see. But I, but for the purposes of this discussion, you can move it from the board, but I just, it yeah. probably, it's the same kind of thing that they're having on the other side about removing uh, no changes to trap check times. Yeah, and I, I guess my hope would be the other side would take it off. Uh, it, it is painful to take it off. It, it's a it's a compromise on all of our parts. Uh, it's not going to be a particularly popular uh, position for any of us to take uh, with our constituencies. Uh, philosophically, it, it, it's it's a real stretch and it is a real compromise. Um, and so I'm kind of wondering, uh, given the conversation and where we just started this most recent round about folks being willing to compromise, uh, I'd throw it back in your court. What are you willing to take off the table? Okay, thanks for that, Bob. Um, Kyle, Lauren, Tyler, all your hands are up. Kyle, I'm not sure if you want to be in the direct line of what Bob's question, or if we want to bump. Oh, well, and it just it just to... occurred to me, Jamie, that I'm I'm an alternate today, so I'll yeah I'll sit down. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lauren. Go ahead. I will, and I'll say the reason I am really uncomfortable removing it is because um, I think. 30 days to 24 is the same as 30 days to 28 for my people at this point. Like the difficulty of going from 30 to 48 and 30 to 24, that's 30 days to two. So, you know, when we say, where, where are you coming from? Tyler was willing to go down two whole weeks. That's a huge change from what the current is. And so that's one of the reasons why I don't want to take no changes off trap because for my guys, uh, they're not going to agree with 24 or 48 the same way you guys aren't going to agree with no. So I can't take it off while 48 is still sitting there because that doesn't seem like any amount of compromise from 30 days to me. We're not asking you to accept our proposal. We're asking you what you're willing to take off the table. What I'm hearing is you're not willing to take anything off the table. No, that's not true. Something that seems more reasonable, closer, that, that is less of from 30 to two. Um, I, I, it, I would take no changes off if 14 was sitting there and that's still reducing it in half. Okay, uh, that's what I'm asking for. So, so we can take no changes off and put it at 14. We're trying to narrow it in either direction. Well, no, because so. that's as long as 48 is still on there. If my choices are 14 or 48, I'm going with no. Yeah, I, I'd so rather let's take my chances. I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. Let's, if if right, it but, was, we were talking more 14, 21, this is where I get more comfortable saying I'm okay with no changes disappearing. So let's just make sure we're clear on what we're talking about here. So so if, so what, what I just want to capture what I just think I heard and then Tyler and Kelly, I'll let you guys jump in. Um, so it sounds like that, you know, so we've got consistent 48 hours in line with Stanford for a bearer across all categories. So that's one. And then there's a caveat to that, which could be 48 hours in line with Stanford for, for, for fur bearers across all categories, except kill traps, which could go to 14 days instead of 30 days. So that's a caveat, that's a, that's a refinement to that. And if that was the case, if people supported that, and again, you know, there's more conversation to have, if that's what we're talking about, then the no changes to trap check could move to the other board. Do I understand that correctly? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. there's also up there greater than a 14 day interval. So is that what you just said, Jamie? Uh, well, there's two 14 day. There's there's two. Well, 
options up there for something less than 30 days on the kill trap right. side in combination with 48 hours in standard in line with the standard for fur bearers across all categories except kill traps because that's what those other two options are addressing right so i think two two of us said or at least i think i said um i could probably get my members down from 30 days but not to 14. So something between 30 and 14. Um, okay, so we put that on there. And so uh, Lauren, do, did I capture it accurately? The way that yeah, I just said? I'm in the same place with Dorenda and all of that is also coupled with making sure APHIS is funded appropriately to meet those new timelines that they have the on the kill yeah on it so that so that um any way that changes how APHIS has to work or their staff or increased hours or whatever they have to do to meet those new timelines I want to make sure that we're also saying that we all will support that funding so they can do that instead of saying you have to do this and then when we go to the legislature and ask for money, then we're fighting about whether or not we should fund them at all. This this is where this is where the two things have to work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So, but I guess I want to point out that it sounds like we're all talking still about making changes. I mean, at least in, in terms of this board and where we are today. And so I'm just wondering if the no changes can, I mean, you know, I mean, if you guys can't agree on some combination of 48 or 14 or 15 or whatever that is, then, you know, anything that's on the other whiteboard, you know, just comes back into play. So it's really more for this conversation to winnow down and figure out, you know, is there is there a combination of things that the group could support? And I think what you're hearing is from what Bob Salinger was saying is that, you know, in that they took off the 24, even though they really want that, and they're saying, you know, if, if we're talking about trying to come up with some combination of something different here, could you guys take off the no changes, even though you really want that? I think that's what he's saying. Well, I think what I'm also saying is you can put 24 back on there. Um, as, as far as I'm seeing it and my members see it, 24 and 48 is the same. So if you want to put the 24 back on there to go along with no changes to trap check intervals, okay. Um, that's not, I don't think that's going to change the discussion that we're having. That would be fine with us. That's HSUS because the more I'm listening to this, um, and not seeing a lot of movement, to be honest, our members for the Humane Society of the United States and, um, are, are really at, you know, from what we have heard, it's, we're, we're talking about 24 hours. So if we're not, I, I'm not sure how this board and moving 24 hours to the mm -hmm. second board, but we might as well have all the options up here in 24 yeah. hours. And because, that's where we were starting with, was yeah. just having them all on the same board. And then folks started saying, hey, you know, seeing these still up there makes us feel like that, you know, it's a lightning rod piece. And so if we could start to winnow this down to a set of, to, to some recommendation that we could start working with, uh, maybe we could take the sideboards away. But it sounds like that people aren't comfortable to take the sideboards away. And we have more conversation to have about this, you know, these emerging ideas. And that's fine. I mean, we just keep the sideboards in play and keep working on the merging ideas to see if there can be some movement there. Um, Tyler, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify why I didn't jump up and say that we could take off the no changes to trap check intervals. And that's because my suggestion above there is conditional that we would increase funding for APHIS. Um, and that is same similar to my shooting down any 24 hour trap check intervals that has apparently been shut down by the other side here so it's again we are so far apart and we have a lot of fundamental differences like our definition of compromise here um, from my perspective the intervals are what they are right now and that's where quote-unquote negotiations should start not where protectionist groups feel it ought to start um, like I said, we are very far apart here and I'm losing confidence by the minute here. Well, let's hear from Bob and Drenda and then take a step back and assess where we are. Go ahead, Bob. 
Um, I guess from my perspective, uh, you know, you, you negotiate from uh, along a continuum and uh, we, we told you where we're willing to take one step. I remain interested in hearing what steps you're willing to take. We may be far apart. Uh, it, we obviously are. Uh, but I do think it's a good exercise to take things off the table. You know, if you're willing to give something up uh, and move to a specific point, that doesn't mean you're moving beyond that specific point. It doesn't mean you're coming down to 48. But I'm interested in hearing what you are willing to do. Uh, what I thought I heard was that you're willing to do 14 and uh, increase funding for uh, APHIS. If that's your position, I hope you'll put it on the table. If it's not your position and you're really sticking with the status quo, then, then I would like to hear that as well. The fact that we're far apart is not surprising. The question is whether when we take a step or not, whether we're going to continue to narrow that beyond that and whether we can find common ground. So, you know, that's what I'm looking for. But I agree with you. If, in fact, uh, this is it, then let's stop having these meetings. This is getting awfully silly. And let's, uh, there's other forums in which I think we can uh, move forward. Um, I do think uh, public sentiment is shifting rapidly uh, on this issue. Um, I think Oregon has been stagnated for an awfully long time. Part of the reason things are where they're at is because industry and trappers have been uh, unwilling to make changes in the past. Uh, we've been through this a few cycles and you guys had the um, political leverage on your side. And so you haven't had to make concessions in the past. Uh, you've been able to hold the status quo. Maybe you think you can continue to do that. Maybe you're right. Uh, we're here because we're trying to see if there is any common ground at all. But if there's not, then let's get done with this and let's move into a different forum. Okay, thanks for that, Bob. Tyler? Well, maybe I could start with a question here. You know, if you don't support increased support for wildlife services, do you acknowledge that their productivity will plummet significantly given the, a further restricted trap check interval to anybody? I would just weigh in to say we couldn't even stipulate that animals suffer in traps as a group. So, uh, but I would suggest that uh, of moving down to 14 days just for lethal traps is not such a significant movement for wildlife services that it would be onerous for them. Kevin, can you speak to that? Um, can you speak to, I guess, if there would be a decrease in efficiency? I think we've already done this, but just to reiterate, well, thanks, Tyler. Uh, yeah, I mean, any change in uh, a check interval is going to have an impact. It's, it's going to mean that we're going to not be able to cover as much that we do, provide as much broad-based service that we do, because it will increase that frequency. So that, that's going to be more trips to the location, um, and, and that means we, we service less. So, so that is a cost. That is a cost of the, you know, the wide diverse people that we provide services to. Um, you know, part of the costs that really don't get fleshed out and discussed is what's the results when, you know, an agency, whether it's wildlife services or another professional group that provides services, what, what are the results when those individuals aren't there or available is we often see that people get frustrated and begin to do things themselves. Um, and, and one of the things that wildlife services has reiterated is that, you know, being a professional, being a, re, you know, a public servant. And, and having the responsibilities that we do federally to comply with ESA, uh, with NEPA, and, and working with the agencies on their state requirements, uh, we provide a lot of protections to resources and a lot of protections uh, for endangered species and species of concerns. Uh, and so I just you know want to be mindful that as we've seen in other states and, and to the point of um, adapting, you know, wildlife services follows the, the rules in the state unless there's exemptions given. Um, and just because uh, wildlife services has adapted to those change in rules, doesn't mean that the services are the same or that the efficiency effectiveness are the same. And, and as we've seen in some of those states that have uh, a 24 or four, uh, 24 daily check, 
uh, their, their efficiency and effectiveness does decrease and you see a lot more people that are doing things themselves. And that's not always in the best interest of some of those other resource and values that are being protected. So, you know, I think those are important things to be considered as, as part of what those costs are. It's not just a monetary cost. Yes, it will cost individuals more uh, to get the service, the same service that they're getting, but there's other costs that should be considered. Yeah, thanks for that, Kevin. And and you know, and just one one thing that I, that strikes me, Tyler, in your question and in looking at this, is that it really, I mean, with all due respect, Kevin, you are one you know resource provider. Um, and what we heard was from you, Lauren, and from others that you know there have been moves for the um, um, for the land managers to. Um, like tax themselves um, to to have or for additional dollars to come in to be able to fund, you know, it, it's really about resources. It's really about the resources, um, um, it, regardless of who gets it, right? Those predator damage control districts tax themselves to pay wildlife services. So APHIS is still the service provider. Right. Well, I guess my point yeah. is that the, the, the interest here around, you know, if you're going to shorten the time check period, that there needs to be resources to offset that because of the impact. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to get at. And so I, I guess I don't want us to get stuck on, you know, are we funding APHIS or not funding APHIS? The question is, are there resources available to deal with the shorter time because you're gonna need more providers. The land manager are gonna need more resources or more support in order to make that happen. Do I get, I get that right? I guess I just wanna make sure we don't get hung up on you know, are we funding APHIS or not? If it's about resources. Um, Quinn, go ahead. Was was Drenda ahead of me? Oh, I don't. I don't know, Drenda. Did you, I put you, did my you hand you? down. But oh, I you did. Oh. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I'm wondering if we, could we agree on the increased trapper education and uh, as a starting point? Are you asking anybody in particular? Nope, just the group. Brenda, can you say that again? I said just the group in general. No, no, I know just the group. What are you asking oh, the group again? Well, are, are, is there anything on the board, specifically increased trapper education, but is there anything on the board we can all agree on? So we've got Quinn and Kelly's hands up. I don't know if they're prepared to answer that question, Drenda. You know, I I mean, I can only speak for myself to say, you know, yes, broadly speaking, I do support increased education for trappers, but that's beyond the scope of our mandate for this work group and, and doesn't get us closer to talking about the intervals. So, so Drenda, yes to your question, but for the purposes of this work group, I, I'm not quite sure where it, it gets us. Um, you know, what I was gonna say earlier is that, you know, I, I fully support what, what Bob said, you know, what I heard, I think it was at the last meeting from Commissioner Zarnowitz and, and Wall, um, you know, was that this issue is ripe and it's going to come before the commission one way or another. Um, you know, I, I guess I'm not optimistic based on what I'm seeing here uh, that we're gonna get there. So I've, I've said it before and I'll, I'll say it again, but let's let the commission put forward a proposal and let the public weigh in. I mean, they're going to have to do rulemaking anyway. So, you know, if we can't get there, if there's really nothing we can get to in terms of um, compromise here, then it, it it's moving forward regardless, right? Um, you know, in this year. So I say, let's just move ahead, move out of this work group process, um, you know, respectfully and, you know, understanding that we couldn't re reach compromise and um, move to another forum and, and yeah, let the public have their say. Kelly, your hand's still up. Sorry about that. You know, I think that, when, you know, when we do, am I muted still? No, you're, we're no, okay, here. sorry. I thought I saw my screen, it was muted. I think when we talk about cost and what I would say is what at what cost 
to the animal that's being trapped. And so I don't want to lose sight of that as well. And, you know, regarding wildlife services, um, I am going to say this, Kevin, and I, I um, and, and when, when at wildlife services was added to this work group as a information and resource, what it, my observation is that it's really been serving more as a trapping advocate. Um, and that's been a disappointment from a federal agency. And so I want to, I want to put that out here again, I think I alluded to that at our, our last meeting, but what I would come back again is that, you know, trapping does not and, and cannot meet the basic standards of care that we, this growing, like the public values of Oregonians. And, and so it is, and I'm grateful that we're all here, but I'm, I'm with Quinn, I wanna echo that. If we can't agree, then take it to another forum and then people can have that larger discussion and we can share this and get more public comment. We'll say over the weekend, I was dealing with, along with Bob Salinger and neighbors in a community in Portland where two raccoons um, had been trapped in two separate traps for up to 17 hours. Legally, they could be trapped for 48 hours within Multnomah County. Um, the neighborhood, was outraged. The trapping company was not going to be coming back um, because they were on a loop, they said, and they would just, I don't know, return up, you know, before 48 hours. We were in extreme freezing temperatures in Portland. And what it took was Multnomah County Animal Services responded. And they responded in the way the general public would, horrified that these animals were just there. And Actually, a cat could have got caught in the trap. Any, any animal in the neighborhood could have. And they did request that the trapper come back and remove the two raccoons who were ultimately going to be killed before the end of the night. So they weren't languishing two more nights in a trap. And I just want to again say that the neighborhood and also animal control responded in a way that, that, all, that most Oregonians would when they see it. And that's really what we're talking about. And so I just wanna, again, it, it was one more, it was, it was really an example of just the, the suffering that can happen every hour that, uh, that we're, you know, that an animal is languishing in a trap. And that was a live trap actually. It wasn't even um, a leg hold or any other kind of trap. Lauren, go ahead. Well, I mean, a couple things. One, um, in um, defense of Kevin, I mean, he was asked a lot of really pointed questions at our last one and at our last meeting. And so he was answering the questions he was being asked. So um, I, I, I do, I do want to make sure that that's sort of on the record that he was just answering the questions that were asked of him. And we were one of the members on this group that asked that he be here to provide some of this information because he is sort of the service provider for a lot of our members. And I'll also say, um, you know, we all have those stories, right? So I don't want to like put out the pictures of what the coyotes can do to our calving cows, but I have the gruesome pictures too. And it's not pretty. And that those animals are suffering too. So we all have the, the stories about the different things we're trying to do. And we're not, our land managers aren't trapping these animals because they want to be cruel or they want to just for, you know, shits and giggles. I mean, they're doing it because they're causing real harm. Um, in, in some instances are harming real harm to other live animals that are being, that are suffering, um, as well. So, uh, it's not, it's not all just only the animals being trapped or being suffered, I think is something I also want to put out there because it's also in, in some circumstances, other animals that are suffering as well. So 
So we're at 325 and I got a couple of just questions for the group. Um, it sounds like that uh, people are feeling like they're not very close. Um, I was looking back at the um, chart that Kevin that Kevin has sent uh, sent around about you know kind of uh, what the what the current standards are with fur bearers and the ORS predatory animals. And so when you, when so what I'm looking when I see up here, so you've got I mean I don't know if it makes a difference if we're looking at the 14 days because it seems like there is uh, some you know there's some interest in being able to say, yeah, we putting 14 days or something a little bit longer than 14 days, but less than 30 days on the table. If we decouple that from the funding for APIS, but couple it with just funding in general, increased funding, does that make a difference? So that's one question for all of you. And then I guess the other one is just an observation that um, the consistent 48 hours in line with standard for fur bearers one of the, you know, what, I guess one of the other combinations of options would be because the consistent 48 hours is no change for for bearers right now. And that is something that I heard um, trappers and OHA particularly say, you know, I mean, Jim has been very consistent about, hey, you can't do it in less than 48 hours. So that does feel like a compromise to say, okay, no change for fur bearers, keep it at 48 hours. And then we're at the, oh, the predatory animal classifications. That's the 76 hours and the 30 days. And so that's the, those are the categories that we're looking at making some movement around. And so the 14, you know, the 14 days or something less than 30, um, that's for the kill trap on the predatory animals. But we haven't talked much about the, um, the trap snare restraining timeframe. I don't know if it's worth it to go there, but I guess I'm just wanting to make sure there are any stones unturned um, if there is some opportunity to get closer. So those are just my observations to see if anybody has anything to, to share about that. I mean, if it was for it to, if it was, you know, I mean, we're <laughs> we're doing some sort of hardball negotiating right now. I'm just really trying to squeeze whatever life we can out of the work group, if there is any. Um, and if you know, if folks are feeling like you know we've gone as far as we can go, then people need to say that. Um, but uh, you know, you've got some options here on the table around. Uh, you know, you I mean, you've heard from several different groups say make movement towards something less than 30 days, and you've heard. Um, the uh, uh, the conservation environmental folks talk about that you know they'd be willing to with no change you know to the 48 hours for fur bearers and they're looking for change on the on the others on the on the um, kill traps and the snares. So what what can be put on the table around that because they're they've put out their 48 hours for all. So are there some other options to put on the table here? Some, some nuances to any of these that could work? So that's the the category you're referencing, Jamie, is now 76 hours and seven days. Well, if you remember the information from, from Kevin and Shannon or, or um, Brian can speak to that. So the, 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 you know, if you boil it all down, the fur bearer times are 48 hours right now. And we've heard consistently you know, through this work uh, group process that you know, from, from Jim and from the trappers that you know, really they, they can't go less than that and have it be effective and efficient. And what I'm hearing from the environmental folks is like, yeah, we get that, you know, it's not our ideal, but we're willing to say 48 hours, you know, that doesn't change. So that's a win, you know, I mean, if you want to do a little check mark there, I mean, that's something where people agree. And so we'll, we can set that one aside. And so then we come back to, you know, the proposal on the table is 48 hours across the other categories, which is the trap and snare and kill traps, which right now is 76 hours, 
to 30 days. And then we have a proposal on the table from OHA that's 14 days with funding. Um, and we've heard that from Lauren too, that you know it's gotta be coupled with some addition, with additional funding and recognition that that shorter trap check time means more resources are needed to work in that tighter time frame. And then we heard from you, Drenda, that it's like, ah, you know, you don't even know 14 days is going to work for your folks. So it would need to be something longer than that, but but less than 30 days. So that's kind of the space that we're working in right now. Is is there is there any movement within that space? Because it's you know, we've got agreement around the 48 hours that the fur bearers are gonna that will stay. Jill? Yeah, um, I'm still wondering uh, what comes to my mind is there's a lot of difference between the size of counties. Um, there's some very large counties on the east side. Uh, there's a, a couple of fairly large counties on the west side. But there's a lot of counties that are all pretty much the same size or close. And, um, and to get around those counties you know, to get someplace within 48 hours is not going to be a very hardship, very much of a hardship for a um, wildlife services person or other trapper. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's anything we could do related to, um, you know, portion, portion, portioning off um, certain counties, maybe have a little bit more time for certain types of traps. I'm, I'm just talking in general about any of the, the three different types of, uh, three or four different types of uh, time frames um, where somebody could go easily go check in, uh, for, for instance, my county, Yamhill County, within 48 hours. It wouldn't be such a big deal, but over in Malheur County, it may take them 24 hours just to get across the county um, or get, you know, around on all the different roads. So has anybody, I guess, in this group considered something along those lines? So what do people think about Jill's proposal that maybe it's longer times for larger counties, what that might look like? I know, um, that you know, the group has really talked about um, having it be you know consistent and straightforward, and um, you know not overly complicated. Not not to say that Jill, what you're proposing is, but that's just something. It's an interest that the group has brought up. What do people think about something like that, Commissioner Zarnowitz? I think um, that's something I haven't run by um, my committees, um, but. It's something that I certainly could. And Lauren, you're nodding your head. Yeah, Can't it's, not, it's not something that, I mean, right now, um, it's not what's in our policy book, but it's not something that I wouldn't be willing to bring to them if it was something we could all agree on. Because I do think the larger problem is those larger land managers that really would struggle with the limited time. And I think that my smaller land managers wouldn't have as big an issue, so. I would be comfortable bringing that back if it's something we could agree on. Yeah, and again, you know, Kyle, you're an alternate, but you do rep you are, yeah, you are representing a particular interest. So is the group it would be, is the group okay if Kyle puts his opinion in from the forestry side, even though he's an alternate? Just a head nod or a yeah. no. Go ahead, Kyle. Sorry, I can only see I can only see Lauren and Drenda, so I'm not sure if them saying go ahead is is anyway. Um, just a clarification on the on Jill's um, idea about the geography. Are you are you thinking about for the restraining uh, checks or for 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 the kill traps as well? Uh, it it could be any of them. I'm actually not not. Um defining it for the different types the the only thing i would offer uh again specific to the to what we're doing is the um the ability and the labor force that it would take to to 
to check our right where kill traps for boomers. It's not as much driving around limited as we are having enough hours of daylight to be able to climb down into the into the hole and, and do that across the, the volumes of thousands of acres that we're trapping. So that's the only reticence. I doubt I can get anywhere near it, even on a geography basis. So Kyle, make sure I understand what you're saying. You're, you're saying that even in counties that aren't large landmass wise because of the topography or the it, make, it could be still really challenging to meet. Yeah, that's where I was wondering if there was a decoupling, right? Like the challenges in Malheur County are, are, it's a geography issue to be able to get around to everything else. The challenges in the, in the kind of trapping that we are doing is more in the ability to cover, like you can drive to the, to the landing, but you've got 45 conibears in that unit that you've got to climb down there. And that's a six hour adventure down into the hill and if you've got multiple units that you've got to trap we don't have the labor force to cover the ground in time uh so that that's all i wanted to to clarify so that could you know be put into a proposal for kill traps perhaps that would be longer yeah that would that it could be longer or something along those lines and i but i know you know there's we already have um the 48 hour time frame um, on the board, across the board. So um, that is is something, you know, for, for those type of traps, obviously those are small kill traps. You know, I'm just trying to throw out something to see mm -hmm. if people could find some sort of other way of looking at this. Cause it's, the cost is going to be more so in the bigger counties and then in the smaller counties and of course large landowners uh, like forestry um, that are in small counties um, may have a lot more um, effort to to get to those in uh, 48 hours um, but i don't know that there's you know that's been documented but um but obviously i know what walking through clear cuts and those type of places is like uh, from my past, but, um, but that could be, you know, just, just uh, another way of looking at the problem and looking at using the resources more efficiently in certain areas. I guess that's, that's just one way to kind of change the outlook a little bit. So what do other people think about what Jill's talking about in terms of a, a kind of looking at this a little bit differently um, with some longer times for uh, counties that have challenges? This other, other thoughts on what Jill's proposal. Drenda? Thanks. I'm certainly willing to bring that back uh, to, the, <clears throat> to my steering committee, but I would want to, uh, have an opportunity to maybe list what the challenges could be rather than just size, geographical size. Um, so that I think we would wanna put some thought into that, but I like the idea. I think it has promise. Uh, I just don't want it to become such a bureaucratic process that uh, we add even more difficulty. Uh, so that would be a concern. But, but I'm willing to bring it back. I do have a question, and again, I may have missed this in an earlier meeting, so I apologize. But I'm wondering from uh, the trapper's standpoint on the seven days and 76 hours, uh, what, what the economics would be in moving those two together into a 76 hour uh, time? So, Drenda, are you asking about what the, you know, if they were to shorten, if they were to shorten it to seventy six hours, what the economic impact would be? Well, is that something that's uh, that that we could entertain, or is that such a hardship that, I, and I don't know from the county's standpoint. Um, 
So I've just like input on that. It's going from yeah. seven days to 76 hours. Yeah, well, I mean, that's on the predator side. And I think that that's probably Kevin that would be able to address that. But I don't know. I mean, I'm not putting words in your mouth, Kevin. I don't. I just don't know that you'd say much more differently than what you said, which is any shrinking of the intervals on a on a um, uh, a predator um, service side is an increase in cost and time. So, but unless there's something different, uh, no, I won't add to add to you know prior statements as you summarize. But I, I would also want to just remind everyone that. Uh, you know, as far as individuals that can trap under those predatory statutes, I mean, that's wildlife services, certainly, but that's also wildlife patrol operators, individuals that are acting as an agent to someone on their private property uh, or that private property owner themselves. So it's not just wildlife services that are looking at that, but it's certainly anyone that's doing that for business that would be an economic, you know, challenge uh, that that would be considered. Thanks for that clarification. Kelly, go ahead. Yeah, this is a, and this is a question I think for ODF and W. So I just wanted to get clarification. Already it's 48 hours on public land for trapping of coyotes. And is that for um, any kind of trap in, including the neck snares? So I just wanted to ask, would Jill, would you be proposing? So we're just talking about, are you talking about if there was kind of a carve out for certain counties um, just on private land. I was just in, in some counties. I just was looking for, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm not planning to change things for um, as it exists when? already. Okay. Yeah. And for, yeah. But I wanted to seek clarification too, though. Um, just for my memory, Brian, could you refresh my memory about that? Okay. Yeah. So, um, Coyotes are considered an unprotected mammal when they're on public land. And so they are gonna be a 48 hour uh, trap check, whether it's restraining trap or a kill trap like a neck snare. And since I'm kind of jumping back in, I wanna answer the earlier question about the European rats and mice. And so I'll take a, a real quick jump in there. Um, as, as the chat said, and it's pretty clear, you know, predatory animals includes all rodents. And so the non-native European rats and mice will fall underneath those trap check times. Um, but specifically the, the European house mouse, Mus musculus, and two of the rat species, Rattus norvigicus and Rattus ratus, forgive my rusty Latin. Um, those are exempted from the wildlife laws. And so they're not considered wildlife. That means they don't fall under the unprotected mammal um, trap check times but they do fall back to and fall under those predatory animal times. Uh, Kevin, you had your hand up. Is and it's down now. Yeah, I was uh, only gonna jump in and answer the question if, if Brian uh, hadn't, but he's got it all done. Okay. All right, so we've got 15 minutes left. Um, so here's where it looks like we are. We've got a proposal on the table for a consistent 48 hours um, all, all, across all categories, which is no change in fur bearers, but would be a change for the predatory animals um, on in snares and kill traps. We've got a proposal of um, 14 days or something less than 30 days on the, on the uh, kill trap side. Um, we haven't, we don't, there's no counter proposal on the snares side that's come out yet to the, you know, to the 48. Um, so that's kind of where we are on that. And then there's the idea of regulating by county with the caveat that, um, you know, folks would need to carry that idea back to their groups too, because that's not something that they had, can, they had talked with their groups about. And then there's also the consideration of, um, you know, a, a clear delineation of what those challenges might be. I mean, size, topography, um, were two that were brought up and uh, wanting to make it um, really clear and not more complicated, more bureaucratic. So that is where we are. 
Um, and so I guess I would ask the group, I mean, do you feel like there's enough here that represents some movement um, to be able to bring some ideas back to your groups to come back together with something that's closer? Or do you feel like you've exhausted yourselves in this meeting today and gone kind of as far as you can go? I mean, sort of where are you all, where are you at? So it'd be helpful to hear that um, going around. And I think actually what would be helpful, oh, goodbye, Kyle. I think what would be helpful is if we just heard from each of you, each of the primaries um, about where you think you're at and what you'd like to do with the information that we've heard today. Um, so we can decide if it makes sense to meet again um, to, to, or, or not. So um, I can call on you or you can just jump in and share what, where you think we are and what you'd like to do next. Well, it looks like I'm gonna call on folks. Um, why don't we hear from uh, Lauren, if you don't mind going first. Well, um, I, I guess I'm just kind of at a loss of where to go from here because I think that any amount of time that that's reduction from the 30 on kill traps for my members, I'd, I'd have to bring back with the, the caveat of that would be coupled with increased funding or advocacy for increased funding for APHIS for all services. And I don't think that that's something that um, is supported across the board. I think there's, there's any supporting for funding um, for a service like APHIS, I think comes with the, the caveat on the other side of that it would be for non-lethal and conflict management. And I, I, I just, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of at a loss of where we go from here. Cause I don't see don't a whole lot you, of coming between the two. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, being a mom too, multitasking. I understand. Thanks for that, Lauren. Okay. Who would like to go next? But where we, if, if there's any, if, if there's enough here to carry back to groups to get to keep working it and then come back, um, or if we feel like we've exhausted ourselves or some other option. I mean, you've made some considerable progress. It doesn't, might not feel like it, but I mean, you have some things you've agreed on here. And I think the, um, the sticking point is how much movement can you get from down from that 30 days? And we spent you know, a lot of time um, at the last meeting trying to understand that. And then um, what it would mean in terms of filling that resource gap to have it be a shorter period of time. So it seems like that's where we're stuck is that that piece. I'm, I'll am i take back to my steering committee the uh, Jill's idea about uh, maybe different criteria for different counties. But also, I don't think, I mean, that might get uh, AOC closer to 14 days, doesn't get it closer to 48 hours, doesn't get it under 14 days. Um, so I, I don't know what to go. I don't know. I'm with kind of with Lauren. I don't know if, if that's helpful or not. Okay, we'll hold that thought and let's hear from others and make a group assessment. Tyler? Yeah, I think there's kind of an unknown on this sheet of paper here, um, Jill's idea. Um, but I worry, right? I mean, seeing how far we are apart on these other things on the sheet, I just worry that we're going to talk about this by county. We're going to spend a bunch of time looking at every county and we're just very, very different. And our, our expectations for intervals are very, very different. Um, so I guess I'm not sure we've heard from anybody on the protectionist side of the table, but I would be very interested in hearing, you know, if they are interested in uh, discussing Commissioner Zarnowitz's idea. This is, I'll go. Um, uh, I think, I would, at first, I guess I would be interested to know if there's any other similar wildlife laws that have um, more discretion for county in terms of um, like standards of, 
maybe what's allowed in terms of any other kind of enforcement, um, if there would be a comparison. I, for the reasons that the Humane Society of the United States has been um, against or had concerns with any other kind of county by county approach, I think we would with this as well. Uh, just for our perspective, we've gone as far in terms of 48 hours. So any other extension in any other county, that would be that would be hard, at least for the Humane Society of the United States to, to support. I just wanted to at least put that on the record. And I'm so I think that's where we would be. Thanks for that, Kelly. Yeah. Okay, we haven't heard from Jim or Bob. Yeah, I'll go ahead, Dan. Um, my main concern here is for the Oregon Trappers Association and to protect that 48 hour uh, trap check. Uh, beyond that, um, knowing trapping like I do, I have to support wildlife services and the job that they do. They have a pretty extensive job to do over thousands and thousands of acres. And I think we need to leave it up to them as, as to what they can and can't do uh, on trap intervals. All right, thanks for that, Jim. Bob, Quinn. I think that if, uh, you know, the trapping side is struggling to get to 14, I don't think there's a whole lot more to uh, spend time on here. I think, I think we've thrown its course. Uh, we've gone around on this for a lot of hours um, and uh, that delta is pretty huge. Thanks for that, Bob. Quinn? Uh, I agree. I, I think we've gone about as far as we can and I'm, I'm ready to move to another forum and let the public have their say. All right, well, so it sounds that we've got a couple of folks that are willing to take a couple things back to their groups, um, but it does, it sounds like that there is still a pretty big gap that everybody's acknowledged um, between where you know, you've, you've made some movement, but it's not quite, it, it, it's too far for some and not enough for others. And we don't seem to be able to, to, uh, to narrow that, that gap. So, um, you know, it's not up to me to say we shouldn't meet again, but I'm certainly not seeing a lot of enthusiasm and support for continuing the conversation. Uh, so um, I don't know, Shannon or Jill, if there's anything that you want to share at this point for encouragement or. Um, I, I guess uh, I can't, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, the majority vote, it looks like, um, just leaving it as, um, as it lies now, because I, I don't, I agree with you, I don't see um, there's really nobody in the middle. Um, so I think that, that it's possible that this group is, um, has finished their work for now. That, that will throw it back to the commission to decide what the commission wants to do. And, uh, I'll be talking with, um, with Chair Wall and the department on Monday. And so we'll I imagine this will be part of the discussion as well as other things that are already on the agenda. Uh, Shannon, anything from ODFW that you wanna share? Yeah, this is Kevin, Jamie. I didn't know oh, if Shannon was back in the room, um, but, but I definitely wanted to echo what Jill said. So even at the beginning through our conversations with the, with the chair and with the active commissioners on both these work groups, uh, we, we definitely will be having conversations about what has been discussed, what people's viewpoints are, 
is there room for proposals that staff develops and what those might be? That's a that's a, been an ongoing conversation the whole time. So as Jill said, that's going to stay live. We know that uh, these issues come before the commission in uh, in June as we look toward our what most of these rules are embedded in our uh, fur taking regulations and those rule sets. So yeah, it's a it's an ongoing uh, kind of activity. So I, I agree with Jill. All right, and so um, and then one thing for both you, Jill and Kevin. Um, is that you know, something that we can offer is to just put in one place, uh, you know, a report of what's been done and what's been discussed and um, kind of where we ended up in terms of the range of proposals on the table so that you've got that all in one place. So that's, uh, and we can, we'll send that to everybody and folks can, can give us their thoughts on that. So that way, at least we have a, um, an accurate reflection of the discussions that, you know, the group has had for the rest of the board and staff to consider. Yeah, that's that'd be great. And um, I, I want to thank everybody for putting all the time in. It's obviously was very time time consuming and probably very frustrating. And um, and I learned a lot from everybody mm -hmm. along the way. So I'm very appreciative of everything everybody's put into it. Yeah, thanks for that, Jill. And um, you know, I'll echo that um, from myself. You know, we certainly learned a lot. I think that um, everybody gave it really, you know, as much as you can to try to understand the other's perspective. Um, you've you got you went as far as you could go. I mean, I, th I think it's important to recognize, you know, that and uh, and be able to move forward. Um, we'll put together the report and we'll send it around to folks. And of course, we always. You know, it's always great if we can come up with something that everybody's like, yeah, this is good. But it's it's really a testimony to everybody working really hard um, to try to understand perspectives and try to see where there's a, a place to move. And it's certainly reasonable that, you know, at times there isn't a place to move. And if there are other forums that um, folks will be pursuing, then that's, you know, it's, it's people's options to do that. Um, so I think everyone participated in good faith and I really appreciate um, how much time everyone has put into this. Sam, anything for you to say? Just want to echo that and uh, thank you all for all of your hard work over the past few months. Anybody else want to say anything for the good of the order? We've got a couple minutes left. All right. Okay, well, we won't be meeting again. And the next email you'll get from us will be a draft report. And we'll be looking for your feedback on that to make sure that we've accurately reflected um, the conversations that you've had. So we'll give everybody back their two minutes of their afternoon. And thanks for folks who have been watching um, and hanging with us for all these months. And uh, I'm sure once the report is finalized, it'll be posted on the website. And um, you'll be able to track the continuing conversation that the commission will have about this through the ODFW website.